What have you been watching? Boo. <laughs> Trying not to have die of a heart attack. Uh, Thanks, what are we watching? Yes, it's Watch This Bitches. I uh, rented a movie with Mrs. GB the other night. We rented Upgrade. You probably heard of it. You have. I have. How is it? I have heard of it. It's pretty good. We we enjoyed it. It's a uh, I guess an independent take on the RoboCop concept, more or less, but uh, done in a in a unique way. And uh, I wouldn't want to spoil anything, but it's a sort of a revenge movie with, uh, you know, a RoboCop vibe. And it was really well done. It's amazing. Like, I thought the movie looked really good and I'm sure like it didn't have the biggest of budgets. It's amazing what you can what you can put together these days if in an indie film, you know, nice, a really nice looking science fiction movie. Uh, Upgrade. Check it out. You guys, right. you guys never watch anything that I recommend. I'll watch up. Uh, I'll watch Upgrade when it's like easily accessible. There's there's certain parts of the show where I feel like I'm just talking directly to the audience, and it's pretty much any time I watch something for watch those pictures. That's basically true. <laughs> it's not what easy. Else you watching? <laughs> it's not easy to to do that. And now I know what Rush Limbaugh feels like. Yes, and you, you and Rush Limbaugh have a lot in common. Yes, I'm high on Percocet right now. Mm-hmm. Well, yes. Um, <laughs> I've been watching Killing Eve as well, which is a TV show that uh, Mrs. Sheepy had heard about. It features Sandra O. Oh. Do you know who that is? Yes, from Grey's Anatomy. From Grey's mm-hmm. Anatomy and Arliss. You probably remember That's her. That's right, yeah, Arliss. Arliss. Had Arliss as well. <laughs> she was, now, these she was, these like, are shows the... that I've seen. That's yes. a deep pull. I enjoyed that. Oh, she was probably the best character on Arliss. If you think I about enjoyed it. Arliss. I watched that show. It was a good show, but she was, if you think, if you remember her character of, San, uh, no, Rita Wu, uh, she was like a very funny character and she always put Arliss in his place because Arliss was, was pretty much an asshole and he was always fucking up and somehow she would always like shove it back into his, in his face. Um, but Killing Eve is a really cool spy thriller series it's a like a bbc series somehow starring sandra O, oh. and it's it's really well done i think you, you can watch this with your wives actually because the main most of the main characters are women and it's i don't know it's really well done i like sandra O. Oh. she does a good job all right so check that out you guys should well it was uh, <laughs> i bought it on xbox it was 10 bucks for the season one I don't like to watch it with commercials. I understand. Mm. Uh, what else we got here in Watch This Bitches? I've been watching Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan on the Amazons. I thought about watching that, but... This is Shipwrecks, like, six episodes into that, I think. Yeah, I'm about six episodes in as well. I may have just finished... I think I'm halfway through episode six. How does it compare to the so. video games? Uh, the video games are better. Okay. <laughs> but this is still pretty good. It's not great, but it's mostly good. I'll give it like a B. A B? That's a good grade. It's, you don't just it, see the guy from The Office the whole time? You see a lot of Jim from The Office play Jim Ryan, uh, <laughs> super spy. You know, it, it's. I think he goes from analyst to international spy maybe a little too quickly, which is interesting because they that they jump right to but they linger on other subplots maybe a little too long. Like, I think I would like a little more Jack Ryan and a little less of the bad guy's wife. I understand why she's important, but I also don't care about her for more than two minutes at a time. How are the action sequences? There's there, there's not... I mean, there's, there's a couple that are pretty good. I don't think it's really about the action, per se, as it is about the intrigue. You know, seeing what they're going to do, how is, you know, we know what the, we have a basic idea of what the plot is and we know things that they don't. So when are they going to learn what we know? Oh, I think, I think it sounds like Killing Eve is in the same genre as this and it sounds like it's better. It sounds like it's a lot better. More, more original for sure. Jack Ryan is very well produced. It's very slick. There is a ton of international locations. This mo- this show must have cost Amazon a fortune. You know, that's why they can't pay their employees, because they're too busy making shows like Jack Ryan. That's why they're pissing in a bottle, because they're afraid to go to the bathroom. Yeah, because Jack Ryan needs to be in Paris and the Alps and Turkey <laughs> and, 
everywhere else. So yeah, I, it's a good show though. I, I mean, I I'm enjoying it. Check it out if you have Amazon Prime. You already paid for it, so might as well. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Did you read about this Witcher? Thing? Yeah, Witcher I think news? that's fine. I like Henry Cavill. Uh, you know, I'll whatever. I'm sure he'll do fine. I have no opinion on it one way or the other. So. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, whatever. Good for him. Anything that, you know, work is work. I'm not invested in The Witcher or Henry. <laughs> it's probably better than... Uh... <laughs> I, oh, he's good, he's and gonna, he was good in Mission gonna Impossible. Have to live the rest of his his life with that whole mustache situation. Yes, like that is what it's it, not that big of a deal. No, Come it on. is. That's like what he's it is. what he's known for now. No, he's no so. he's known for uh, loading his arms now. Yes, yes, Mission I Impossible agree. took that away. <laughs> the arm thing definitely. He was good at that. You can't take that away from him. Can no, you? I think he's fine. I think he's you know. He's a good-looking guy who uh, could big. be in action movies. He's big too. Yeah, and strong. He'll be fine for him, for the Witcher man. Yeah, is his mustache going to be there? I can't. I, I'm trying to. <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to remember what Geralt's uh, facial hair so, looks like. <laughs> so your problem is you've looked at that image for too long, Ship, and it's burned into your brain now. I haven't really like done that much research into his mustache thing. So it's just it's just so weird. I don't see it at all times. Okay, yeah. So Gerald has a, like a a full like well kempt beard. So I think that that's what will happen, <laughs> and they'll have to CGI that out when they bring him back to be Superman. <laughs> <laughs> just the whole his whole jaw now is mm-hmm. his whole head. Might as well just render his head separately. <laughs> They're gonna use the head model from Steppenwolf. It'll just save some time. Right. Uh, but I I watched something on Netflix. Okay, there the power of Grayskull. Oh. It's a is it good? It so it's long. It's good. It's a little bit long um, because in a lot of the ground was already covered in the toys that made us. Even though this was okay, made, that was going to be my next question. This was made in 2017, and this is a documentary about the Masters of the Yes, Universe. Um, and it's good because it has a lot of, like. A lot of the same people that were in the the toys that made us, they're interviewing them as well here, which makes sense. Uh, they they got all the right people. Um, the, I I like all of the stuff about the cartoons and the in the toys, but then they like spent like a half hour on the the live action movie. Almost it feels like. like okay, I mean that's a part of it. They probably had a lot of footage. Yeah, but it was like none of them. They like they all like were trying to like stand by their work on it, like and it's like I don't know, guys. Like maybe it, there's no need to defend right. that. Like the the, the the it can be a very small part of the movie. Just step, move past it, and go on to the next thing. Right, like it was, um, and I'm I forget how to say that the Skeletor, the Frank Langella, Frank Langella, Langella. Yeah. yeah, I got it right. <laughs> I was like, you don't know how to say Skeletor. No, I don't know how to say Ske- Skeletor, but uh, the the actor, the famous actor that played Skeletor, Franklin Jella. You mean Skeletor? <laughs> he 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 is really serious about his rendition of Skeletor and like <laughs> the the artistic liberties that he took with Skeletor, and it's like. But he was good as Skeletor. He was fine as Skeletor, um, but like just hearing him opining about like these these ad libs he did and these like it's like he was like being in Hamlet but Skeletor and that's how he played it as well so what's wrong with that I'd rather him take it seriously than not care well, the problem with that movie it was in. it tried to take itself seriously though it was that movie think, was really I, strange like they they talk about was, like that movie was like they said they said well, it wasn't so- and they said like okay we knew we had to like get from eternity uh to New York City in like the first fifteen minutes, and I'm just thinking they're going. Wait, let's go back to that. Why? Wh- why did why? we have to do that? It's cheaper, but it's not. Save like, money, it yeah. can't be that it's much not really. cheaper. Like back then, maybe fly, fly the is. cast out to like some field somewhere, and now you're an attorney. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I guess like that. That was like what the producer said. Okay, we're gonna green light this movie, but 
only 15 minutes are going to take place in Eternia. Right. We have to make sure that everybody that hates this source material or that loves this source material will hate this <laughs> rendition hate it. of it. Um, but no, it, it's a good documentary. Um, How much Ram Man is in it? There is some Ram Man. Um, they they talk about Ram Man quite a bit. They they talk about how very controversial the art styles uh, where they got all the that from and how they they repainted different characters like Stinkor is a repaint of Merman and <laughs> that type of stuff. But mm-hmm. it was cool. it was interesting too because like the guy who was like the lead designer on all of the the toys and characters you he apparently went on to work on the the turtles line which that makes sense. yeah and and that was about the time that tracks that was about the time <laughs> where all the characters that were coming out in masters of the universe were just terrible and mm-hmm. so because it, it was a new guy doing it not not if that that guy was doing a bad job it just like it lost it there and i was like okay and that makes sense because turtles just came and ate his lunch at that point but i don't know it was it was kind of sad because there was all kinds of uh, people on there hoping that Masters of the Universe was going to make a comeback, and uh-uh. I don't I don't know. I don't know if Courtney Cox is up for another Masters of the Universe movie. <laughs> was she in that? Yes, yeah, she was. Who is she in that? Who is she? She's Some... the she's the girl from Earth whose parents are yeah. dead. Julie Julie Winston, oh, your favorite Masters of the Universe character. I'm. I... <sighs> Was it? I no, can't remember it, anything. It was it that that was supposed to be another movie, but then they, at the last minute they made it Masters of the Universe, or was it? Or Universal Soldier was supposed to be the sequel. That could be true. I don't remember that I part of it, you, but this was definitely think, started as a okay. as a Masters of the Universe movie. Okay, huh. I think maybe Universal Soldier was supposed to be Masters of the Universe Part Two, but I could be making that up too. So. Huh. Don't quote me on that. I don't know. Don't hold me accountable for that statement. I might have to. Will you? Wombat, do you want to take either or both of these read this bitches questions? Or do you want to ignore them? Um, I mean, it's up to you. I'm fine either way. Maybe Shipwreck wants to help with that other one. What do you think? I, I was taking a drink. I think I'm fine if we answer these. Okay. So then we'll do both. R. Keislin has to say, how would New Wombat and or Shipwreck handle Magneto in the future with his World War II origin becoming more unreasonable with how long ago it was? Well, there's a couple of ways you could do this. One, you could slow down Magneto's aging process. You could say it has something to do with gravity because he has magnet powers. I don't know. It's dumb enough to just be like, all right, right, whatever. Or maybe he's the child of... Or the grandchild of, you know, uh, you know, Holocaust survivors or not survivors. Like maybe his grandparents were killed and his parents had to, you know, fight their way out and they instilled that in him. These are all yeah, frozen and ice. reasonable things. Yeah, or frozen <laughs> and nice. Works every time. More importantly, how would they handle this in the My Hero Academia universe? I don't know. I've never watched an episode. They would have a power for uh, not aging. Mm-hmm. There, power for non aging. A quirk, if you would. Yes. And M. Scheiman has to say asks, uh, You have mentioned your Marvel Unlimited favorites in the past. The Visions was fantastic. Any others you recommend? Shipwreck, anything other than the Visions you would recommend? I really like that similar time frame, uh, Howard the Duck run. It's completely different than what vision was but uh i i think that had some really quality writing and i don't know if you want to get it, really quirky it, squirrel squirrel girl featuring the cad cast is really good as well if you like the visions you could read uh champions that has viv vision in it and there is some uh future interactions with vision and viv vision that are interesting and there's a good chunk of them about two years of them on there now so there you go. I recommend that. 